I'll show you the first one that I take regularly, which is the spray. So <laughs> this is an oral spray that is an iron spray that I really I really wondered what is the taste of this iron spray. Mm. <laughs> but okay. I guess it can be a convenient uh, form of uh, food supplement for some consumers. Yeah. Yeah. Hello and welcome back to Science on the Menu. Today we're going to be talking food supplements. What exactly are food supplements? Do we actually need them and can they be harmful? To answer these questions, I'm joined today by Leonard Matevich, one of EFSA scientists. Welcome, Leonard, to the studio. Uh, thanks for inviting me, Maria. Uh, I was considering this would be a hot chair, but I think that now the air conditioner in the studio kicked in finally. So, so far, so good. It's I'm happy good. to be here. Yeah. Good. So you're feeling relaxed and you're feeling comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Leonard, when I was preparing for a chat, trying to reflect a bit on my own routine at home and trying to see what kind of supplements do I have or what I think are the kind of supplements that I take on a, on a daily basis... So I just wanted to bring them here, show you a few of them. The first one that I take regularly, which is the spray. That is an iron spray that I, really I take. I really wondered what is the taste of this iron spray. Mm. <laughs> but okay. I guess it can be a convenient uh, form of uh, food supplement. This is one that was recommended to take by a medical professional daily. Although speaking about uh, food supplements in the form of sprays, they can be sometimes trickier to, to know exactly the dose we are taking with mm. this spray. So this really dispenser needs to work properly uh, because obviously uh, when comparing them with a pill or a tablet with a uh, very, very precise dose, this can be a less, a less uh, precise, but for sure very convenient uh, for, for some consumers. And as long as they deliver efficiently the nutrient uh, uh, and they are consumed as, as recommended, they are perfectly fine and a legit, legit uh, form of supplement. I think the recommended was uh, four pumps, but I know what you mean. It's not always easy if to... If you miss your uh, mouth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's very easy to, to make the dose correct. Another thing that I have with me is actually this soluble vitamins, which I think that if I infer from what you're telling me, the dosage there is a bit more straightforward. So basically, you know, you, you just put them in a bit of water. Well, indeed. I mean, uh, food supplements can uh, come in, in many different forms. Uh, first association, I guess, uh, of many people when thinking about food supplements would be tablets, pill, uh, pills, uh, capsules, sockets, uh, powders, maybe also liquid form, spray form, as we saw. Uh, and it's really about uh, food business operators, how they want to market them, how they want to present them to the consumer and uh, considering several different factors like uh, palatability, uh, bioavailability, how, how, how good they are uh, uh, ready for our body, mm. where there is a prolonged uh, release mm -hmm. throughout the day. Mm. Uh, also convenience, for example, now looking at, at this uh, form, uh, is it really convenient? I don't know. Maybe it uh, would be mm. much better if you just in a few seconds you take a tablet, you sip it with the water. Here, for example, you need to wait maybe even a couple of minutes, then Maybe you are also not very thirsty, but you need to drink the whole uh, glass of water. And then also you may lose some, some of the ingredients uh, at the, at the, at the, in, the, in the glass. Ah, yeah. indeed. But, but why do they come in these different shapes and forms? So yes, you mentioned one is convenience. But Ma it's mainly convenience. Mainly yeah. convenience. Yeah. The effectiveness of the ingredient, does it, this also determine what shape exactly they come into? Yes, uh, for sure. I mean, uh, obviously this one is dissolved in water, so it is containing uh, vitamins, I, I presume, uh, which are water-soluble. Uh, for sure, I mean, the, the food matrix, if this is the proposed uh, mm. use, uh, condition of use of them, plays a role, uh, especially in regards to bioavailability of, of, of uh, uh, nutrients uh, uh, they, they want to, the industry wants to deliver to, <laughs> to, to our bodies. You mentioned the word bioavailability. Can you re remind us or tell us what exactly that means in simple terms? It's a very actually simple term. Also, I think there is a legal definition which says that it needs to be available to our body. So if we okay. take something not uh, uh, available, bioavailable, it will simply pass through our body, it will be excreted, and it, there will be no particular use of, of taking something like that. Okay. Basically, our bodies need to be able to absorb the... Absolutely, the, yes. Okay. Perfect. 
I have one last thing for you that I, I kept for last just because I wanted to show you um, something that I take almost every morning to supplement my diet. And these are my favorite uh, cornflakes here that we have. Um, and I know they're rich of fiber, but I think additionally they have some vitamin B12, B13. And I, I think I, I also get some extra iron on them if I believe the label. So... Is this also a food supplement that I'm taking? If at the label of the product, it is mentioned that they contain uh, vitamins uh, and minerals, then uh, here we are talking about uh, fortified food. And you also uh, correctly pointed when you said that you are supplementing your diet. Mm. So in both cases, in case of food supplement and fortified food, their purpose is to supplement your diet. Okay. Now, obviously, the, the difference would be the different form in, the, in, in which supplement is delivered. So for sure also uh, when you eat cereals, breakfast cereals, you eat them as a part of your regular uh, meal. While uh, food supplements you will take in a, in a dose form, in okay. a tablet or a pill or what uh, we also previously mentioned. So this would be a more or less exact dose you will take. Mm -hmm. Also here the difference would be that uh, I guess uh, very few of us would uh, actually... Uh, weight the the, the yeah. amount of cereals we would uh, before we, we eat them so the 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 dose we take uh, of uh, of those added nutrients is uh, quite variable and not very precise as we would uh, get uh, from from food supplements let's say it's a different story it is but uh, yes also the fortified food uh, played a very important role uh, in uh, in some populations uh, we know that uh, they can be uh, that food can be uh, uh, fortified on a voluntary basis. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is uh, just uh, up to the uh, food business operator. Maybe they want to just replenish uh, some nutrients uh, which were potentially lost during the production process. We know that uh, a lot of nutrients are not actually uh, very thermostable, or just they just want to add some 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 benefit to consumer. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we also have uh, instances when uh, member states uh, require, they, they mandate the, some, some food uh, or some nutrients to be uh, added into certain food stuff. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, we have, for example, very famous uh, uh, addition of uh, iodine in a uh, table salt. Okay. Or maybe example of vitamin D, uh, which is also added to certain food stuff, uh, mainly in Nordic countries. So where people are really lacking uh, sunny days. So this is a, a part of uh, uh, nutritional policies of each member state. Uh, when they uh, pick up or identify that there is a widespread uh, nutrient deficiency of a particular nutrient in a general population. Okay, great. I didn't know this. That's great. There you have it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we, we know what is fortified foods, but just coming back to the topic of our podcast, the, the food supplements, how do we define food supplements? Maybe to start with the definition, actually, we have a legal definition. And in my mind, uh, when, when reading the, the definition, I think uh, there are key uh, five key uh, elements or characteristics which uh, each uh, food supplement needs to have. I hope now I will remember all <laughs> five <laughs> elements. So let's try. First one would be that they are uh, uh, defined as a foodstuff. That uh, okay. means they also belong to the general food law. Uh, therefore, they need to be safe for human consumption. Mm. They need to supplement your uh, uh, normal diet, okay. therefore the name. They need to come in a concentrated sources of nutrients and other substances with a physiological uh, and uh, nutri uh, nutritive uh, uh, effect on your body. Mm -hmm. They also need to come in a dose form. So this okay. uh, recommended is most often daily dose needs to okay. be clearly defined. And also they, they are designed to come in a measured small unit quantities, okay. uh, which uh, obvious, I mean, usually means uh, micrograms or milligrams okay. uh, daily. So for example, one tablet, this would be an example of a dose form. This is form a perfect example a... of, of a, a food supplement uh, fitting all those uh, five uh, key, uh, key five elements. There's a lot of choice available, and as you mentioned, different dosage, liquid sprays, but do we actually need food supplements? Well, that is a <laughs> million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, complicated question, also complicated answer. I, I will try to, 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 to explain. Uh, I would guess or, or assume that the majority of uh, health care professionals and nutritionists would really uh, tell you, recommend you that uh, you first need to focus on a balanced and varied diet. Mm. So you really need to try to get all your, of your uh, nutrients from a regular diet. 
Then, uh, of course, uh, this is when the things uh, get uh, much, much more complicated. And uh, depending on the different situation, the individual cases, like uh, also age groups, uh, different lifestyles, uh, yeah. different uh, also conditions, uh, for sure there is a room also uh, and there is a place uh, in our diet for, for food supplements as well. For example, uh, there is a known uh, requirement also in some population groups, uh, uh, they, at certain stages, they need more nutrients. Okay. We know for, for pregnant uh, women or those who would like to become pregnant, they, they require more of folic acid uh, yeah. or vitamin B9 uh, in order to prevent uh, neural tube uh, defects of, of fetuses, mm. also iron. Uh, then, uh, as I previously also mentioned, uh, people, for example, who, who are uh, not exposed too much to the sunlight, mm -hmm. they would require more vitamin D. Uh, we also know that uh, elderly, uh, their diet is typically not uh, sufficient to uh, meet their requirements for calcium. Mm. So uh, these would be some examples, but I would say in general in the EU, luckily we do not uh, have so many examples of where there is a widespread, uh, let's say, uh, nutrient uh, uh, deficiency. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, for I would say for a majority of population, healthy population, uh, food supplements are not not needed, and you really need to 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 try to get all of your nutrients uh, first of all from the balanced and varied diet. Yeah. Then uh, maybe also I would like to distinguish here, uh, and this is also sometimes maybe confusing for people, uh, when you have some medical conditions which is diagnosed by your health care professional, like your doctor, no? Uh, then uh, he or she can recommend you or, or prescribe you even uh, some, some, uh, some uh, nutrients. Uh, for example, in the case of iron uh, deficiency anemia, uh, you can get a prescription of, of uh, iron, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in this case, this would be a, a medicinal product or a drug okay. because this is also very maybe important to emphasize that uh, food supplements as any other food uh, are not meant to prevent, treat or cure disease. Yeah, this for prevention, we, we, we may have some mm -hmm. philosophical discussion, maybe yeah. some people will not uh, completely agree, but this is also legal definition. So such, okay. such uh, properties of food should not exist. This is really uh, focused uh, and uh, specialized for medicinal products and drugs. Okay. And also in that case, you will most likely get uh, those uh, nutrients in uh, ther at therapeutic doses, which usually in most cases are, are higher than what you would uh, get uh, from, from food supplements. Yes. I was also wondering if food supplements, it's, it's, this, it's kind of the case of too much of a good thing. It's not good. So the, you mentioned already a bit the dosage, but can in certain cases the intake of supplements also be harmful? Unfortunately, yes. And this is also a common uh, miscocep misconception when uh, people think that uh, uh, something is uh, good and more is even better. And especially mm. when we are talking about uh, vitamins and minerals. And mm. unfortunately, this is not the case. And here is also where EFSA uh, plays uh, a big role uh, throughout the years. Uh, we have been uh, constantly working on uh, establishing uh, something called dietary reference values or DRVs. One of them, uh, they they are uh, focused on, on excess intake. So uh, okay. the risk uh, caused by the excess intake of, of particular nutrient, mm -hmm. nutrient yeah. to food supplements. And uh, here in this area, uh, we established something called upper level, okay. which is basically a level of intake of a particular nutrient, which can be cr chronically used uh, without uh, risk for, uh, for human health. But after this uh, level, uh, we can expect the risk to start to increase. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is for sure case uh, for uh, majority of, of nutrients, vitamins and minerals. And uh, we know, for example, I can mention, uh, I was personally working on, on an upper level opinion on ma uh, manganese, mm -hmm. which is essential mineral. But on the other hand, if taken in excess uh, amounts throughout prolonged period of time, it can be neurotoxic. Okay. Then, for example, we have uh, vitamin D, uh, which can alter uh, bioavailability of mm -hmm. calcium and even cause uh, hypercalcinemia. Uh, we also have uh, issue with uh, excess intake. Uh, again, I'm repeating mm -hmm. during prolonged uh, intake, intake uh, time mm -hmm. 
of uh, folic acid or vitamin B9, which can mimic deficiency of uh, vitamin uh, B12. Okay. And so people already suffering for this deficiency can be even at a higher risk. I was also preparing a bit for a conversation, reading a bit more at the, at the labels of the supplements that I have at home. So for example, the, the effervescent tablets were saying they support your immune system and physical well-being. So this is something that I think we at EFSA consider as a health claim. And we're also responsible in a way of, of assessing, am I correct? Yes, so far what I, I what I was mentioning and focusing on was uh, really safety assessment or risk assessment EFSA is conducting, mm-hmm. either due to deficiency of, of a particular nutrient or I, either due to excess intake. But uh, indeed, uh, health claims are the area where uh, EFSA is also assessing uh, benefit. Mm-hmm. And uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, it needs to be proven, scientifically proven, that there is a causal relationship between uh, an intake of a particular uh, mm-hmm. uh, food or uh, food ingredients. So we are also not talking only about food supplements, but of course, health claim be also related to them and uh, claimed uh, effect on our health. So there needs to this uh, relationship needs to be established in order that uh, later on uh, risk managers, uh, European Commission and member states can approve such a health claim, and then uh, a food business operator can put them uh, put uh, such a claim on on on, on a labeling of of their product. Here again, I would like to emphasize what I mentioned before that uh, really food uh, function of a food is not to treat, cure, or or prevent disease. So they cannot contain such claims, uh, wording, uh, but they can and they usually contain uh, wording such as that they support, Mm -hmm. help, uh, normal functioning of different uh, systems within our body, like nervous system, muscles, uh, bones, uh, Mm -hmm. gastrointestinal tract, and so on. In the area of food in general, but also when we are talking about food supplements, first and and, uh, most importantly, food and food supplement need to be safe for human consumption. Then we can speak about uh, potential benefit, but again, in another framework under uh, health claims. Okay, good. Leonard, you mentioned a lot of very useful, I think, bits and pieces throughout the, throughout our conversation. What would be the, the leaving message for uh, the people listening and watching us? Consult, inform yourself, and in this way you will uh, also be part, uh, you will be an active uh, role in uh, mm-hmm. making food supplements safe. Perfect. I have nothing to add. (laughs) I have nothing to add. Thank you very much, Leonard, for your time and expertise. Again, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. To our listeners and viewers, thank you very much for joining another episode of Science on the Menu. Remember, you can catch our episodes on whatever you get your podcast from. For more science content, make sure you visit EFSA's website and follow us on social media. That's all for now. Thank you again very much. And I look forward to seeing you next time on Science on the Menu.